Paul from Groove Armada. My main kind of port call right now is as a DJ, as a music producer, and I'm here to talk about uh, my user of the uh, the KLK headphones. But I don't know, it's a good question. I don't, don't quite know how many records we sold. I mean, I know that the first album we did probably did, definitely did over a, over a million comfortably. So let's say, plucking a figure out the end, let's say three million in total. Uh, gigs have been amazing. I mean, live show wise, the um, the one that really stands out for me would have been a, would have been headlining the the other stage at Glastonbury, which is the sort of the biggest gig I really that a dance that can have, you know. So that 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 playing that gig and nailing that gig in front of sixty thousand people, or it was, was uh, was a standout live moment for me. Nothing comes close to that. I think uh, DJ wise, you know. We, it's, the DJ thing's always come kind of second fiddle for a long time, so the thing that's always been the constant in our lives has been has been the terrace space. You know, it's kind of I went there when I was a kid, you know, and I've been going there as a grown up or grownish up uh, for about the last 15 years. So yeah, playing the space terrace is the sort of identity as DJs. My studio is a it's in a basement of my house, which is which is great quite into that, having the kind of convenience of it all. But I do have slightly narky elderly neighbours on one side. So late at night is, is the problem for me. And, and the, the KLKs are actually brilliant for that. I kind of, from about midnight onwards, I wear them when I'm working. And actually I quite like the vibe. It's a very different experience. They, they sound great. They're, they're the kind of dynamic range is, is pretty good. It's quite representative of the way I think my studio mixes anyway. But uh, there's something about being in your world, about being in a set of headphones. You can have it quite quiet, but it's quite sort of an intense experience. So I quite like that sort of 12 till 3 slot on the cans and wake up in the morning and find myself slightly shocked by what I've been doing. Across the sort of dynamic range, they're, they're, they're really good. You know, the sort of top end is really bright and, and really clear, really precise. And the bass is there, you know, it's just there as, as much as a a set of headphones, you want them to be there, you know, and um, no, I really like it. I kind of feel like I can work on them. I can get excited about working on them late at night, which is the key, you know, like they don't feel flat. And uh, I can feel like that's, you know, that's an enjoyable experience and I can get up in the morning and it isn't all over the place. The, the thing about the KLK is they're sort of wrap around and I quite, when we DJ, I mean, Andy and I DJ together, we have a sort of, we have quite a kind of complicated little booth set up that we've built which uh, involves like lasers and we run our own visuals and some sound effects and we do the lighting which we've got a lot of stuff going on plus the two of us coordinating playing and actually sometimes you sort of when you've got that much stuff going on and there's all that noise around you there's something about having the sort of wraparound experience you just get a bit of clarity and a bit of a, a mind to sort of have a think away from the noise which i really like about them I mean, I don't, I don't listen to music on a go. That's the thing. I, I'm sort of like uh, when I'm out and about, I'm mainly on my bike, you see. So that's that's that would probably be a little bit reckless. <laughs> you talk, asked me earlier about the sort of the venues that we love playing. I mean, the, the, the gigs in my life, and, and you know, Glastonbury stands out for any British band. It's the ultimate. But actually, sort of as a venue, you know, Brixton Academy. We did a five night stand at the Brixton Academy, which is which was amazing. Which is sort of an equaling a record, and so. Those sort of things matter to you because, you know, I don't want to be too much of a nonce about it, but there is that sense of a legacy. So if we do it, we've got to come back, we've got to do it in the right way. And we've got to know that we can pack out at least two nights at the Academy. But I think we can do that. And I think, and it's sort of watch this space kind of vibe. 2015 would be five years since we last played Flicks Academy. You know, it was like a nice little round anniversary. So you never know.